What's up everyone, Andrew here from Apple Insider, and we have spent uh, the last few days testing out this guy, the brand new 2020 MacBook Air, and we've been comparing it to our existing or previous generation. So in this video, we're going to talk about the new MacBook Air and compare it directly to the previous generation model, what those differences are, and if they really matter. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, a lot of the new aspects of the updated MacBook Air are only going to apply really to new users. So people who are just kind of upgrading the new model or picking up the new model for the first time. You have things like the newer, lower starting price. So instead of $1099, the new model starts at $999 and $899 for those education users. So really good new starting point. They've also increased the base storage on that entry-level MacBook Air. Instead of 128 gigs, it's now 256. So another great addition there for people who are just picking up the new machine. There are other differences, including 6K display support. So they have a new uh, graphics card in there, the new Intel Iris Plus graphics, and that's going to allow you to run a 6K display coming out of the MacBook Air. Now, that may or may not matter for a lot of people out there. Are you gonna be running a 6K display? Probably not. I mean, you could run Apple's Pro Display XDR, but it's a $5,000 monitor. Most of you out there are gonna be running a 4K display, maybe a 5K display, uh, just with this, you know, MacBook Air. So the new 6K display support is not gonna be a huge differentiator for a lot of people out there. Now, what is going to be important is the processors. So the new MacBook Air starts with a 1.1 gigahertz 10th generation Intel i3 processor, just a dual core processor. That is changed from the previous generation, which started out with an i5. Now this is going to be a very big differentiator and we've heard a lot of comments about it. So I wanna address it here in this video, which is specifically what that processor change means and how it's going to be impactful in using the machine. Now both the 2018 and the 2019 MacBook Airs used that dual core i5 processor. I'm pretty sure it clocked in at like 1.6 gigahertz. So it's a 1.6 gigahertz i5 processor compared to the new model, which starts with a 1.1 gigahertz i3 processor. So I saw a lot of comments saying, oh my gosh, Apple dropped the price, but they just killed you on that processor, lowering it to 1.1 gigahertz i3, and it's just not worth it. It's not a good deal. Well, that's actually not gonna be completely accurate. Yes, the new model does start with that lower processor, but because it's the 10th generation of these Intel chips, it's going to be better than what we saw before. Performance is actually gonna be a lot better on these new ones. And in fact, when we ran our Geekbench test, the latest version of Geekbench, we got a 1074 on the single core and a 2412 on the multi-core. Do you know what that dual core i5 processor got in the previous generation? Only a 740 and a 1663. So you're going from a 740 to a 1074 and a 1663 to a 2412. So the gains here are huge. So even though it's going to a lower clock speed and an i3 instead of an i5, there is a huge difference. And if you still want an i5 processor, it is only $100 to add that a la carte or a few hundred dollars to upgrade the next, gen the next model up, the next step up, which has a few configurations on options on there as well. Of course, there's even a quad core i7 option. So there's a quad core i5 and a quad core i7 option. So you have a lot more range in the new MacBook Airs than the previous generation. So the base models are in fact substantially faster than the previous base generation. And we have new expandability options to go to a quad core i5 and a quad core i7 on top of that. The other big change that we saw this year is the upgrade of the keyboard. I know a lot of people put off buying the previous generation MacBook Air because it still had the uh, butterfly switch mechanism on the keys and it was not gonna be as reliable. So with the new model, Apple has shifted back towards the scissor switch mechanism, the same magic keyboard that we saw in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So reliability issues should be a thing of the past when it comes to the keyboard. So if you're looking for an entry level machine that's gonna last you a long time, the new MacBook Air is definitely a solid contender. There aren't a lot of 
you know, big flashy changes. There's no redesign from what we saw in 2018. It still has all that. So the same display, still the retina display, still same thin design, the same ports on the side, all that's the same. But you have that new, more reliable Magic Keyboard. You have new, better graphics with 6K display output. If you're picking up a machine for the first time, you're gonna get base storage upgraded to 256 instead of 128, and you're gonna have an option to go up to two terabytes if you want that larger internal storage. You have uh, the better processors across the board, so huge gains on the base model, as well as going up to that quad core option on the i5 and the i7. So the new MacBook Air, a very solid machine. If you're looking for an entry level model, this is great, but it's not bad at all to jump up 100 bucks more to go to that i5 processor quad core. Definitely consider that. So if you're thinking about picking up a new MacBook Air, you can find the links down below in the description to get you the best prices and save some cash. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think. Reach me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, and we can continue to talk about the 2020 MacBook Air. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.